Hi everyone, my name is Ahmed Kabir. I'll be presenting uh, today's webinar. It's uh, uh, EMOX webinar series, and uh, we have high frequency and low frequency product. And today we're going to cover the high frequency product HF HFOX. In particular, we're going to talk about how you can use HFOX to design and simulate a tapered slot antenna array for the treatment of breast cancer. Okay. All right, so our agenda will talk about the hyperthermia techniques for cancer treatment. Uh, we'll, uh, uh, then we'll uh, uh, put some emphasis on the microwave hyperthermia uh, using uh, antenna arrays, design and challenges. And then we will talk about a particular uh, design, this tapered slot antenna or TSA antenna design details show you some simulation results uh, using our product HFOX. Then we're going to go to live demonstration. And right after, after the live demonstration, there will be a question and answer. At that point, you'll uh, have a chance to uh, ask questions where you will type your question on the right side of the chat uh, region. We'll be glad to answer all of your questions. OK, fine. So OK, hyperthermia techniques is used for different uh, cancer treatment okay. uh, it is it is a very basic simple idea is to expose a, a tumor like in this case a breast cancer tumor or any other tumor for that matter uh, to uh, to, uh, to a higher temperature sufficiently long time like an hour or so, depends on the tumor and on the application, okay? And uh, now the objective of the hyperthermia treatment is locally to raise the temperature about delta T, about 3 to 10 degrees for one hour to achieve either a complete cell death of the tumor or you make the tumor more sensitive to ionizing radiation uh, or chemotherapy. By the way, the hyperthermia or microwave is not ionizing. And there are three different techniques to use to heat the tumor. Uh, what is called thermal conductivity, conduction heating, ultrasound, or electromagnetic heating using microwaves. And we are going to talk about this particular uh, techniques, technique. All right, so, okay, so what is hyperthermia, a microwave hyperthermia, okay? Uh, it is a technique that uses antennas and high frequency to focus and concentrate the radiation to the tumor or around the tumor, and because the, the, the tissue of the tumor the biological tissue is mostly water than the microwave, as it's just your regular your microwave heating uh, will uh, increase, raise the temperature of the of the tissue. Okay. Uh, recent years, it, it has become a mainstream technique for treatment of, of, of cancer, whether uh, breast cancer or other type of cancers. Okay. Why it became mainstream? Because it, because 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 of its proven efficiency, safety. It's very safe because it is non-ionizing radiation, and it is non-invasive. Okay. Well, uh, the hyperthermia, the microwave hyperthermia, it the main tool to apply the the electromagnetic uh, energy is what we call antenna radiator, okay? which is the main challenge, you know, how to design an optimum antenna radiator okay? that takes into consideration the time, the frequency, the power, uh, the depth of the, uh, of, the, of the tumor. Doing all of that without overheating 
overheating the surrounding healthy tissue because you don't want to burn the healthy, the healthy tissue around the tumor. So that is the, the main challenge, how to design such an antenna. Okay. Um, so this is just sh shows you an example here for this for, for a, a brain uh, tumor treatment using hypothermia. Okay, and we want to concentrate more on the breast cancer treatment. Okay, using an, an array of uh, uh, an anten uh, array of antennas. Okay. So these are basically design challenges for microwave hypothermia. Okay. Number one is, as we said earlier, you have to be selective and focusing your heating only the tumor and not to damage or burn or kill the healthy tissue. That's one. Uh, heating rate, how much power, the duration. Okay. Uh, if you have uh, multifocal tissue, if you have multiple tumors, how you can optimize your applicator to be able to apply uh, the microwave energy to uh, different tumors at the same time as you're going to see later. So the precise arrangement of the antenna around the tissue, you have to worry about signal interference, coupling, radiation overlapping, okay, phase and magnitude, how you optimize the phase and magnitude, and of course you have to worry about the EMC, electromagnetic compatibility issues and safety. That's why it takes a long time uh, to get approval from uh, FDA or other bodies to get uh, to approve your uh, uh, hyperthermia uh, system for cancer treatment. Okay. Today we propose to you to use HFOX, okay, our uh, high frequency simulator. That's going to help you uh, tackle, overcome most of these design issues, okay, because uh, it is integrated in Swordworks, so it has multi, multi configuration as you're going to see later. The multi configuration allows you to uh, select different configuration if you have uh, one or many antennas or if you have one or many tumors okay uh, the 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 integrated thermal solver because after all you want to apply electromagnetic energy is to heat is to raise the temperature of the tissue of the tumor and slightly maybe around it so thermal solver uh, and transient because you want to apply uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the energy or the heat for a certain duration. So transient thermal is very important. And our transient thermal, as we're going to see later on, it's integrated in the high frequency, so you don't need to export and import. You know, We have parameterization, so it allows you to parameterize and optimize your applicator or uh, phase the or, or your antenna array. Okay. Uh, in the post processing, you can control the phase and power. You'll be able to look at parameters, you see reflection coefficients, uh, impedances, uh, uh, post processing SAR and field plotting, antenna parameter and far field plots. All of this can uh, be uh, very helpful in uh, answering or uh, solving or overcoming these design challenges. All right, let's uh, dive straight to this design, this design details is from this publication. It's not our design, okay? So it's a tapered slot antenna, okay? As you're gonna see later on the real model, it is at, at 2.45 gigahertz, uh, Tapered slot antenna array with meander line slots at the bottom face. These are the meander line slots operating at frequency 1.9 to 3.0 gigahertz. Uh, the model for the the breast for the breast is is a, uh, is a cylinder of 100 millimeter, and the model for the tumor is. Uh, uh, is is a, is a sphere actually two spheres here we have two tumors of 10 millimeter uh, diameter okay these are the first set of results first of all before you you introduce the the uh, the uh, entire, entire array of antennas and before introducing 
your antenna uh, as an applicator to the uh, tumor, you have to optimize your uh, single antenna. Okay, so this just without it just just the antenna, the TSA antenna, radiating in free space. Okay, and uh, it's showing you it's around 245 gigahertz. You see there is a, a resonance at uh, around that frequency. Okay, so it's important to uh, optimize your uh, uh, your antenna, okay, antenna element, so to speak. Okay, so this is from HFOX results, as you're going to see later. Okay, so from 1.9 to 3 gigahertz, so 245, uh, you know that you have resonance and you have around the minus 30 dB. Uh, the electric field plot, the antenna, and this is the gain pattern of the antenna okay next this you take that antenna and make an array of that antenna so basically repeat that antenna it 12 times it's exactly same antenna but uh, place it around the cylinder or the uh, uh, the repressed uh, uh, fa phantom okay uh, and this small sphere here is the model of the tumor and in this case you have two tumors it's very important to optimize your phase to get the maximum heat okay or the maximum energy delivered to the uh, tumor it is not easy okay you need a lot of uh, optimization using hf works to optimize okay so each antenna has a different phase okay this is for uh, one uh, unifocal breast cancer okay and this one is multifocal breast cancer where you have two tumors and as you can see when you have two tumors uh, uh, phases are different so it's it's important to use a proper phase for each antenna to be able to focus the energy right inside around the tumor and not other places in the tissue so uh, these are some results okay so this is one is if, if you we if you, you were to use a uniform zero degree phase for for all the antennas 12 antennas so to speak this is the electric field plot and you see the maximum electric field right at the center of the phantom of the okay but uh, when you optimize you see you are mostly concentrating close to the tumor okay. this is important to see the importance of uh, optimizing or choosing the proper phase okay so this is uh, uh, this is more uh, evident okay uh, the SAR as you can see uh, the SAR here you have a lot of SAR at the center of the breast Okay, which you don't want. This. this is not desired, and this is a desired. Okay, so most of the SAR is right inside the tumor. Okay, and slightly around it. Okay, and see it is more focused around in the tumor and around it versus in this case when you have a zero phase excitation for all the antennas. You see it's energy is everywhere, and you don't want this. Okay, now let's look at the, the temperature actually. Okay, and this is most important. Okay, in zero uh, degree phase, all the antennas, you see the temperature, the maximum the temperature is not in the tumor but at the center of the uh, breast phantom. Okay, right here, 590, this is the increase in temperature. Okay. And you don't want this, you want this. Okay? So it is mostly in the tumor and around it. Uh, and the uh, temperature rises 9.44 C. Okay? And uh, this, of course, the exposure for one hour, uh, the grand transit for one hour in this case, in this case. Okay? All right. Now, if you have two tumors, 
Okay. Uh, this is the electric field, and as you can see, okay, uh, by optimizing uh, the phase, you see you are localizing uh, the maximum feed is, is closer uh, to the tumors, okay, and uh, you can see it here uh, clearly in this case that this one is zero phase, and uh, this is optimized phase, and you can see you are really hitting uh, the tumor right at the center of the tumor where I have the maximum SAR. You can see it also using the temperature simulation. You can see, okay, so rather than having the heat at the center of the brass phantom, okay, you, you have uh, most of the heat is around the, the tumors in this case, in this case here too. So that's, that's the importance of using a simulated HFOX that's going to guide you, help you optimize okay, your heating pattern and again avoid the problem of heating or, or damaging the healthy tissue. Okay, okay so um, now let's uh, move to a live demonstration. Okay, so what you see here is uh, your uh, HFOX. Okay, uh, HFOX is integrated inside SolidWorks, so it is very easy okay, to create, modify, or have different configurations. Like in this case, we are going to make use of the multi-configuration feature of HFOX, we have the first configuration, just the antenna itself, then we have an array of antenna with one tumor and uh, another array with two tumors. Okay, uh, So that's the advantage of being inside HFOX, right? because geometry creation you so instead of creating many different projects you are actually creating just one project okay where you can activate and deactivate uh, different configuration let's look at the first one okay this is our antenna these are the antenna radiating element okay and on the top you have this uh, tapered uh, meander slot okay uh, so the uh, in order, it's you know we aren't going to go into details how you create an HFOX study, but very quickly you create study and, and whether you have antenna as parameter in this case uh, we have a or or time TDR or resonance okay study. In this case we, we have an antenna study, and uh, the properties of, of the antenna study are straightforward. In this case, first case we are doing just a single antenna just radiating in free space in air we have a frequency sweep between 1.9 to 3 okay 101 point and this is central frequency and uh, there is no coupling for this first uh, study uh, let's put the air around it this is the air so this antenna is radiating in free space okay applying material is really straightforward or applying boundary conditions uh, we have many videos now youtube channels you can refer to them so let's not waste time doing that right now but uh, very quickly as uh, the po this is your port that's 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 how you feed this antenna it's a micro stroke micro strip mode okay and these are basically electric field uh, the perfect electric the conductors okay on the ground plane and then and the uh, radiating element and the this radiation boundary condition okay all right let's just hide the air for now so you can hide the air all right once its study uh, is uh, uh, complete we have a lot of results okay first one is the electric field. So your electric field, you can do fringe plot. Uh, you can do uh, vector plot, streamline, 3D point, 3D mesh, 2D plot, so on and so forth. So let's just look at the electric field. Okay? So this is your electric field okay? around the 
antenna elements okay the radiating elements okay and you can of obviously you can animate versus face there you go okay similarly you can do a, a vector plot okay and definitely you can animate okay you can do a, a section clipping okay I can plot on a, a section only and then you can move your section up and down okay well if you don't see the section you can actually do uh, animate versus section and you'll be able to see this one's going to automatically take different cuts and as you can see now it's, it's moving different sections another uh, neat feature is the 2d plot if i want to look at the uh, the actual field data say between these two points wait these two points okay then i can say okay and now I'm plotting the electric field along those segments. I can uh, see them in a text format if you wish. Okay. Of course, you can save, export, do all of that stuff to this plot. So you can do the same thing for the magnetic field, ports field, okay, uh, A, E and H. So uh, you can plot loss densities. Okay. So in, in this case. Um, if I want to do, uh, if, because the only loss I have here is, is, is I want to do the volume loss density, okay, and that's that's why I have my and the substrate because it has a, a loss tangent, so this is my volume loss density, um, so on and so forth. So these are basically the field, the near field results. Okay, we can also look at the what we call circuit parameter. The circuit parameter they come in one table that has all the circuit parameter generalize this matrix renormalize it impedance matrix admittance matrix and of course here we have only one one port okay so uh, and port results at uh, the port results are gamma lambda epsilon effective and zp zpv and so on and so forth at each frequency you have all the results and the red is the central frequency okay where you uh, for the fast sweep okay oh uh, definitely you can export this data okay to normal uh, results uh, cit spc or touchstone or any other format that you want we can always uh, text file if you wish if if you have a different format we can definitely write uh, in any format that you desire you can of course print and uh, export the data okay close just click close so this is second set of the results are the circuit parameter okay now in circuit parameter you can also plot okay in plotting any of the circuit parameters okay you can plot them whether it is a parameter bswr port results so on and so forth as a function frequency and in this case i'm just going to plot the reflection coefficient or the return loss or s11 okay so this is my s11 and as you can see, this antenna is optimized to radiate uh, 245 because that's where I have my resonance. So important. So before, just you cannot just jump straight and start, you know, building an antenna array of 12 antennas, and you have the tissue, and that is going to be really complicated. So first step in the design, in using HFOX, is to use one single element, one single antenna. And you optimize that antenna. So this antenna was optimized to radiate around uh, this frequency, which is good. Okay, that's and again I can plot any other uh, as uh, uh, 2D uh, results. Okay, I could also plot it in Smith chart. Those who prefer Smith chart, okay, can do my S11. Okay, and there you go. This is my S11, and same thing. I can track the data. I have it in in uh, text format and so on and so forth okay it's a really complete uh, 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 plotting uh, utility that, that that we have in hf okay second set of the results are the far field results or the antenna parameter so this is your regular antenna parameter 
all the antenna parameters are right there, right there for you. The incident power, dead power, the activity, gain, okay, the value, the maximum value, okay, and this one S11, so, and uh, all of the antenna parameters, and again, you can export, you can print, you can do all of that stuff, okay. Then, you can also look at uh, the uh, polar plot okay so if I do uh, 2d plot if I do my uh, wait the this is my plot okay this is the, the uh, gain okay the gain pattern okay and if I look at uh, this is the uh, far field in 3d polar plot so any of these properties, any of this, this is your result stable, okay? Uh, just because I have only one frequency here, so just to see one frequency point. So all of this polar plot, you can you can plot any of these parameters, okay? Any of these far field parameters, okay? So once you are happy with your single antenna, then you can start looking at the antenna array. But before I move to the antenna array, uh, I want to show you something is the report. Uh, I can not show you this because it's important. Okay. So instead of taking notes, okay, you can simply uh, uh, just click on the new report you can customize your report here I'm going to enter my name okay uh, company name and today's date uh, you can put the uh, company logo and uh, either Microsoft Word or HTML and what it's going to do is it's going to basically all of the data that you have is going to be copied to a file so you don't need to take any more notes of course it's a it's it's a html file so you can share it with other people on the internet or, or produce a pdf file or, so everything the pre and post processing mesh dimensions uh far field antenna parameter field parameter so on and so forth are right there for you okay all right so much for one single antenna let's now Okay, look at this beauty now. Okay, I'm going to go here and look now. Now I'm going to activate this configuration. And there you go. Look at this. Now instead of creating a completely different problem, I just uh, activated this configuration. Okay? And this configuration, yeah, uh, it has all the antennas. And it's taking time to activate this configuration because it has a lot of data. So just one second, please. Now my uh, antenna array is uh, activated. So what is equivalent to? It's equivalent to solving a, a completely different problem, right? Because Remember, I didn't need to export or import any data. Okay, I just use this first antenna. I made out of it an array using the pattern in SolidWorks. Okay, and added the tissue and the tumor. So, right there, you can see your entire model with the twelve antennas. Now, uh, again, the material. Okay, for it's the same for the 12 antennas. This is the outer air and the, this is the tissue. And this is the tumor. Okay, and as you can see, I have now 12 antennas. Okay, they all excited exactly the same way as the single antenna is, is excited. Now let's let's jump straight to result. Let's look straight at the far at, at the near field. So uh, first of all, I'm going to look at the uh, the field 
when all the phases are zero. Okay, and if you want to see what that means, see edit. And here, this is my. These are the phases. Power of 0.5 watt, and of course you can control the power. And all of the 12 antennas are excited. Okay, at with 0.5 watt, and but this are all at zero degree phase. Okay, now it takes a second. Now, if I look at the electric field excitation now, look at this one. Okay, and this is all done at the post processing level, by the way. Okay, so I can create another, I don't need to uh, resolve the whole problem, I can just create another one at the post processing level, and I can look here. These are the optimized phases. So I'm still using 0 0.5 watt uh, for the power at each antenna, and but the phase is different. Okay. As you mentioned earlier in the PowerPoint, this is the electric field now with the optimal phase excitation. Let's look at SIR now with zero degree phase. Okay, this is the SIR, okay. And this one the SAR with optimized phase. There, see it's a huge difference. Now your SAR mostly concentrated in the tumor and slightly around it. Okay. Whereas this one, okay, is mostly at the center of the breast with a breast which you don't want. Okay. All right. So that's one set of the results you can see. And of course, you, if you want to look at the magnetic field, uh, you can look, look. Let's look at the loss density, okay? This, this is the loss density uh, uniform excitation. And this is the loss density. And of course, it is proportional. The SAR is, is definitely proportional. It has the same pattern as the SAR, the volume loss density. Okay. Now, uh, the results table in this case, I, I saw it was only at 2.45, and these are my, uh, I have 12 ports, so I have a 12 by 12 S matrix, and uh, 12 ports at each port has, they all have the same propagation constant, okay, because it's exactly identical antennas, okay, and this is VSWR. Okay, now, so, so I can see by choosing proper or, pro or by phasing the antenna the proper way I'm able to concentrate or to control the SAR uh, okay now let's look at the the, the far field now uh, this one is the uniform excitation okay and where do where do I control that right here okay in the far field parameters Okay, this is 0.5 watt power again and zero phase, same. And in this other configuration, I have different phases. All right, so what is the effect of that? I'm going to show you what's the effect of that, okay? Now, if I do 2D polar plot, 2D polar plot. Now, first one is the uniform excitation. I'm going to show you the gain pattern, add. And then I'm going to show you the optimal excitation and I'm going to show you the gain pattern. Look, a huge difference. So the blue is the uniform excitation. I have back radiation. Okay? It's, this is wasted. This is an energy waste. You don't want this. You want the red one, which is the optimal excitation. So you assume that, that your tumor is, is, is this way. So this way you want to cover the tumor in this region. But this one is no good this uh, so you can see you can superimpose the the game pattern and uh, or other other uh, you can of course uh, superimpose uh, all other quantities as I said earlier in the polar plot there are all of the antenna parameters okay you can plot them okay the polar plot of them okay. uh, let's look also at the 3d pattern okay as you can see look look at this 3d pattern okay 
around uh, the cylinder okay so it's covering the entire cylinder okay. look at this this is nice and beautiful okay so only in the direction of the tumor you have the pattern the radiation pattern okay so this is very important okay to to to, uh, to, to optimize now oh by the way i forgot to mention that uh to couple to thermal in the properties you simply say coupling and you say thermal coupling okay when you do that okay the results you're going to have the electric field or uh, the electromagnetic result and the thermal results now thermal results depending on the coupling okay so uh, i'm going to look at the optimal coupling and of course you have you have convection in the air okay and the uh, when i look here again this is my power and this is the phase for each antenna okay look now let's look at the temperature this is the optimized right okay and now this one same phase okay and as you can see as we mentioned in the powerpoint they have different uh, they are different this is away from the tumor and when you optimize right in the tumor by the way when you apply the power okay you can apply any power you want so only it's all done at, at the post processing level and by the way the time is one hour okay so it's a therm it's, it's a transient uh, solver uh, transit transient thermal okay so as you can see uh, there are proportional i mean they the 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 heat pattern really similar to S S SAR pattern, but the advantage of HO, folks, you are right inside the same simulator. You are side side. Say it's integrated, okay? You, and you don't need to do it's hands free. You don't need to pass the the thermal loads the losses to a different program, import, export, different mesh. It's all done automatic. The moment you say couple to thermal, okay, the HO folks automatically takes the losses okay the both the uh, loss densities the the volume and surface loss density it feeds them automatically to the thermal solver okay where you specify the convection coefficient and the uh, ambient or surrounding temperature okay and then and you specify uh, the power and again you can solve the electromagnetic part at different power but at uh, you don't need to solve again if you want to solve thermal pro uh, using uh, different configuration or different powers you, you don't need to solve okay it all scales okay and this is the power of HF and the integration and the thermal solver right okay so that's that's so uh, so these are basically the the uh, results for for one tumor and uh, the results for the uh, two tumors are in a sense have some similarities so i'm going to just activate this configuration okay okay now this is my uh, second configuration and again they are different different positions okay so uh so what do I look here? I can look again at the SAR, okay, SAR uniform, okay, and SAR optimized, and you can see there nicely in the tumor, and the similar electric field, okay, the volume density, okay, this is the optimized, and this is zero phase everywhere, and uh, same thing you can look at the uh, temperature okay uh, down here one hour heating optimal phase and you can see the heating pattern okay uh, whereas if you have a, a zero degree everywhere okay this is your heating pattern okay 
So now from one configuration to another, okay, it's a straightforward. Only thing you need to activate the sodos configuration, and it's going to pick up completely different problem. Okay, so, but because uh, it's based on the same antenna design, okay, it's really very efficient, very fast. You can do that. Okay, uh, again, uh, of course, you can generate a report. Um, you can uh, 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 copy and paste. You can generate other studies. You can run all studies. You know, can run all studies before you go home in the evening. So it's a really powerful package with the integrated thermal solver. It allows you to do hyperthermia problem uh, uh, very efficiently and fast. Okay. So uh, with that, uh, I would like to end this uh, presentation. It's already 40 minutes, so I would like to thank you all for your time. And now, if you have a question, please type it on the right-hand side of the chat, and we'll be happy to answer your, uh, all of your questions. Thank you.